Did you know you can get a rotisserie chicken at Sam's Club and Costco for only $5? So let's dive into four quick, easy weeknight meals you can make using only half of one of those delicious rotisserie chickens. All right, friends, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, I am Courtney, and we do so much cooking over here on my channel. Um, my family loves to eat, and I love to cook, so I've got a ton of recipes I share with you guys. I also do uh, grocery hauls and stuff like that. So if this is your first time here and you are into that kind of content, make sure you smash that subscribe button. This week, as I said in the intro, we are diving into four meals that use rotisserie chickens. This was so fun to make because I buy rotisserie chicken at Sam's Club like almost every single week because my husband and my kids love to eat it for lunch. So I will just pop in there and grab one for $4.98 and feed my family just like some sliced rotisserie chicken and maybe some veggies. So quick, so easy, so delicious. But I was thinking, what else can I do with one of these rotisserie chickens? So I came up with four quick, easy, and delicious meal ideas. Now, I will say the enchiladas that I make, I did not make that one necessarily quick and easy, but I do tell you how you can make it quick and easy if you don't wanna take all the steps that I did. But let's go ahead and just dive right in and take a look at these delicious meals. All right, friends, so this is an easy, easy, easy meal using rotisserie chicken. I'm gonna show you how I make it, and I'm also gonna tell you Sometimes I make it using like shredded chicken like I am today with the rotisserie chicken. Other times I will use like breaded chicken tenders. I'll pop up a picture of our favorite kind right here. Um, and we do this for lunch a lot throughout the week. Sometimes we do it for dinner, um, especially on the weekends if we're looking for something so quick and easy. And it's so good too. So I'm gonna start off with a little bit of ranch dressing. You can always use uh, blue cheese, but I'm the only person in my house that likes blue cheese. So I don't typically have it on hand. So we're just gonna start off with some ranch. All right, I like to spread mine out. I've got a tortilla, but you could use any kind of wrap that you like. I just buy the big packs of tortillas at Sam's Club and we use them for like breakfast burritos and all kinds of stuff. Next, this right here, gotta be Frank's Red Hot. Now it could be Frank's Red Hot wing sauce or Frank's Red Hot sauce. Either one works great in this wrap, but it's gotta be Frank's, okay? So I'm just gonna drizzle some on here. You can do as much or as little as you want. I like to just mix it in, make sure it's kind of even throughout the wrap. I don't want super big bites of just ranch or just uh, buffalo sauce. All right, so next I'm gonna pile on my chicken just freshly shredded rotisserie chicken is great. Or again, like I said, those chicken tenders that my family loves, uh, the breaded chicken, so, so good too. Doesn't matter if it's um, white meat or dark meat, whatever your preference is. Next, I'm gonna add on a little lettuce. You can use any kind of lettuce you want or that you have on hand, or you could use spinach, that's good too. Today we're just using romaine because typically that's what I buy from Sam's Club. Then I like to add some tomatoes. You can add in some pickles or some green onions. Those are really good as well. I'm gonna skip all that today, but I am gonna put on a little bit of cheese. Any kind of cheese that you like is fine. Swiss is really, really good in here. I'm just using some shredded four cheese blend. and then we're just gonna wrap it up. This is always the hardest part. There we go, we've got an easy, delicious, flavorful wrap for lunch. Okay, 
Friends, we're going to be making some barbecue chicken pizza, and I wanted to put some caramelized onions on this. I started caramelizing onions for pizza a while back, and my family just absolutely loves it. It just kind of adds this beautiful pop of flavor. So I'm just going to do that tonight because I think it blends beautifully with the barbecue flavor. So I just put some bacon grease in my skillet, and I sliced up a couple onions and tossed them in there. And this took about 40 minutes. I just kind of stuck around in the kitchen and stirred them every few minutes as they developed that really deep, rich caramel color. And then once they were about done I went ahead and added in about a quarter a cup of sherry you can skip that step I just happen to have it and I need to use it up because I don't like the way it tastes like to drink so I only cook with it um I just tossed some in and I let that just kind of like evaporate out and boil for a couple of minutes and I added some salt and pepper and boom you've got caramelized onions and they are so delicious they really kind of elevate any dish you're making all right friends tonight we are going to make barbecue chicken pizza is such an easy thing to make with leftover chicken also great if you have leftover uh, pulled pork so either way it works out fantastically so I just made some homemade pizza dough but you could always just like buy the stuff in the tube or something like that from your local grocery store um, this is just what I always make pretty basic recipe nothing fancy I've let mine rise for a little bit and I'm just going to kind of knead this for just a minute just kind of get the dough working and then we're gonna shape it I do like grandma pizzas which is like a sheet pan pizza so we're just gonna work this into a rectangle all right now my dough is all rolled out and I prepped my pan I just like to put a little bit of um, cornmeal on the bottom uh, that's what they do at pizza places and I kind of like the texture it adds to the bottom if you don't like that don't worry about it just put some nonstick spray on your cookie sheet or whatever you got some butter something like that I just really like that I don't I don't know maybe it's just because I'm used to take out pizza I don't know all right so I am very carefully going to move this over to my cookie sheet there we go and now is your time where if you're just like super unhappy with the shape or the size go ahead and kind of press it out a little bit I'm not really all that concerned with mine perfectly fitting my pan it's great if it does but if it doesn't I mean it's all right and as much as I would love to say mine's like some beautiful perfect rectangle it never is and you know what my family still eats it so if yours is not a perfect circle or a perfect rectangle have no fear I bet your family will still enjoy the flavor of it just as much all right there we go so I'm gonna par bake this tonight because it's thinner and I'm hoping to get maybe just a little bit of crunch on the bottom um, normally I would cook a pizza pretty high like 400 or above I've got mine at 350 for this first, it's almost like a proof. I'm gonna pop it in for about five, maybe six minutes just to kind of get it part way through the cooking process before we pile all of our goodies on top. All right, I just pulled the crust out. It's been about five minutes. It started to puff a little. It's cooking, it smells phenomenal. Um, I actually have my own sourdough starter, so whenever I make pizza crust, I always add a little bit of that in just because the flavor is just, oh, it's incredible. But if you have watched my channel, one thing you know I like to do is I like to brush a little oil or butter and garlic salt on the edge of the crust. So let's do that now. Today we're just going to use some regular olive oil. I've got this nifty little um, container and it just kind of sucks the oil up into this little silicone brush. So I'm just going to use that. I do have this linked down below in my uh, description box if you're interested. I actually love this thing. My husband got it for me for Christmas. And then like I said, I just sprinkle a little bit of garlic salt around the edges. It just adds a really nice flavor to that crust. If you've never tried it before, I do recommend it just because it is so good. Especially if you've got people that are kind of picky and don't want to eat the crust, this adds so much flavor. So I've got my chicken here. I just kind of warmed it up in the microwave so it's not frozen. There's not too much moisture in there. So I think we're going to be fine. So I'm gonna add a tiny bit of barbecue sauce to this, but just a tiny bit, just so it's kind of like mixable. And then we'll add the rest over there on the pizza crust. All right, I've added about that much, maybe two tablespoons, just gonna stir that around. And of course use a barbecue sauce that your family likes a whole lot, cause you're gonna taste a lot of it. I just wanna make sure that the chicken has a little bit of flavor. That looks good. I think I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of salt and pepper. This was rotisserie chicken, so the skin is very well seasoned, but the chicken meat itself can sometimes get just like a little bit um, plain. All right, let's put our barbecue sauce down. 
I'm using the last of this uh, Sweet Baby Ray's, but I've got some other stuff if I need it. And I might need it. Oh yeah, definitely gonna need it. Let me go get that other bottle. All right, here we go, just some more Sweet Baby Ray's. And we'll just swirl that in. All right, we just wanna kind of smooth this around. Make sure there's sauce in every bite. You can go all the way to the edges if you want. Um, I like crust. Uh, I don't like to eat food that makes my fingers super nasty or saucy or anything like that. So I like to make sure there's a nice bit of crust just to keep my fingers clean while I'm eating. Otherwise I have to eat it with a fork and people make fun of me when I eat pizza with a fork. So I would prefer <laughs> to just have some crust. All right, next we wanna add our chicken on. So I know like with regular pizza, you would do the cheese, then the toppings, but we don't want our chicken to dry out. We don't want it to get like crunchy or hard. So we're gonna go ahead and add it on now. Let me glove up real quick. Then just evenly distribute your chicken all throughout here. Now, if you don't have rotisserie chicken, this could be chicken that you just cooked in like your um, Instant Pot, or maybe you grilled in it and it was left over, something like that. Any kind of leftovers are great, or maybe you made chicken just for this, I don't know. I like the rotisserie chickens just because, like I said, $5 for a whole rotisserie chicken. So I can make two meals out of each rotisserie chicken because half of one of those Sam's Club sized rotisserie chickens is a lot of chicken, um, like a whole lot of chicken. So these are my caramelized onions right there. I heated up in the microwave a little bit because um, it just makes them a little bit looser. I did mix a little bit of roasted garlic in here too because I had it. And if you got it, you want to use it, right? So I'm just going to evenly distribute some onions to the best of my ability anyway. Uh, caramelized onions. So don't sleep on these for any pizza you make or pasta or, oh my gosh, they are so good. And they made my house smell so good. I make these every once in a while for stuff because it, I mean, it is a bit of a labor of love. It does take some time. So, you know, I don't make them all the time, but wow, so good. You know, it would be even better because I just did um, some simple caramelized onions, but oh, if you put some fresh bacon in there too, like a bacon onion jam situation, wow. That's gonna be coming in the near future. Just so you guys know, like I've, I've got to act on that now because it sounds incredible and I really want to try it. So these are very rich. Um, they're not like a an overbearing onion flavor or anything, but they are very, very, very rich. A little bit, you don't, a little bit has a ton of flavor. So this little bit that I made is plenty for this pizza. All right, for me, that's it. So I'm just gonna top this with cheese. If you wanted to add anything else, now is your time to shine. Uh, we're just gonna add some cheese. Cheddar would really be great, but um, as most of you probably already know, my oldest does not like cheese, but he will eat just like regular pizza cheese on pizza only. So we're just gonna top it with regular old mozzarella. All right, I do have some provolone. It's sliced provolone, but that's cool. I've done this before. This will give you beautiful cheese bowls um, on your pizza. Provolone is great for that. The do is just kind of tear mine up because it's in these slices. I'll just tear it up into some like rough shapes like that and just spread it around the pizza. All right, there we go. So this will go in your oven. I like it. Like I said, between four and 450 is best. All right, y'all fresh out of the oven. There is that beautiful barbecue chicken pizza. It smells incredible. Cannot wait to dive right in. So, so delicious. You can see the caramelized onions poking through that chicken, barbecue sauce, and all that cheesy goodness on top. Got a couple of little brown spots because I did turn the broiler on. You can go longer if you want, but that was good for us. We're quite happy and excited and hungry. So here is dinner. All right, friends, it's time to dive into 
dinner tonight we're gonna make some chicken enchilada suiza I think that's how you say it never made it never had it but it looked like a great way to use up some rotisserie chicken so in my bowl I've got some roasted corn and some rotisserie chicken it's about half a chicken and I've got an onion that I just sauteed now I'm not exclusively following the recipe because I'm using up some things I have on hand and stuff like that. Um, I will link the original recipe down below, but if you guys have been around, you know I often just kind of like deviate and play around with stuff because that's just how I am. I really like to get creative in the kitchen. And I know recipes are written the way they're written, but I don't know, I just kind of like use it as an inspiration point. But I will link the original recipe down below. So to this, um, we want to season our rotisserie chicken because it's, you know, it's a little on the bland side. Um, once you take the skin off, that's where the flavor in a rotisserie chicken is. So we want to make sure there's less of flavor. I'm adding some lime juice because I just love that fresh citrusy pop of flavor. And then I'm going to add some of this this chili verde fire with fire roasted jalapeno. I picked this up at Sam's Club, never had it, never tried it. it smells, oh I got chicken on it. It smells really, really good. Um, you could use like jalapeno salt or taco seasoning or whatever you have. I'm just kind of looking in my pantry and going, okay, what can we use? What can we add? Stuff like that. So I'm gonna just sprinkle, I don't know, maybe a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half in there and just stir this around just so there's some nice flavor in here. And of course the corn has some seasoning on it because I seasoned it before I roasted it. Um, I'll go ahead and show you guys how I did that now while I get this mixed together. It really was so simple to do. I just took my tomatillos after I like pulled the skin off and washed them and placed them on my baking sheet with a poblano. You can use jalapenos. I'm using what I had on hand. And then I just used half a bag of frozen corn. You could do canned corn too. Um, put a little bit of olive oil on it and some salt and pepper on the corn and just kind of tossed it around and let it roast at 400 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes. Then the corn was done and I took it off. Um, the other vegetables take a little bit longer, probably about 30 to 40 minutes. And that's a perfect time for us to go ahead and fry up these tortillas. Now you got to make your corn tortillas nice and pliable in order to roll them so that they don't crack. Um, there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can always steam them in the microwave by wrapping them up in damp paper towels. I prefer to fry them just because the end result to me is better. Your tortilla has more texture, a little bit more bite, it holds together better. If you steam them in the microwave, they're a little bit on the mushy side. But if you are crunched for time, go for the microwave. It's all cool, it's all gonna taste fantastic at the end of the day. One great thing about this, I know we're investing a little bit of time in making this stuff today, but you don't have to. Um, you can buy canned tomatillos. They, the recipe calls for a 28 ounce can. I just prefer fresh. I think it tastes better. It doesn't taste like a can. So I'm gonna make my stuff from scratch. You totally don't have to. Also, enchiladas are a great make ahead meal because they freeze beautifully. So feel free to make this on a Sunday, pop it in the freezer and pull it out on Thursday for dinner. You know, when you're like super busy and just let it bake in the oven. All right, this is our filling. It has come together. I considered throwing in some black beans too, but I decided not to because I knew I wouldn't use the whole can and I didn't want to waste anything. So we're gonna set that off to the side. Our vegetables are finished roasting, so I need to get my food processor out so we can kind of like get this stuff all mushed up. So I'm in here trying to cook and it is like an Olympic sport navigating my dogs. They are always at my feet. They've got bones in here that they chew on sometimes right now. They've been outside running wild after breakfast, so they're taking a nice long nap. But it is always an event to cook anything because I have got to step around these guys and they like to lay down right where I stand. You can see they're right in front of the stove, which is where I was just cooking to get the uh, tortillas fried up and everything. So anybody else's dogs like this? And do you have big dogs? I used to always have small dogs and it was so much easier to navigate rooms with small dogs. These guys are huge. My husky is like gigantic. He really dwarfs the other huskies in the neighborhood. Um, so yeah, it is like a sport to not fall and break my neck while I am cooking dinner. All right, so fresh out of the oven, there are all my veggies. I think this one tomatillo right here, oh, he's soft. He's just not quite, he doesn't look like he cooked as much as the others, but he's gonna be fine. I love getting a little color on my vegetables. It just adds extra flavor. So I'm gonna try to remove some of the skin real quick and just cut um, the sides of the pepper off and leave the stems because they're just not a pleasant texture in a sauce. 
and I'll get everything loaded up in the food processor. I just pulled the seeds right out and got most of the skin off of that poblano. Um, I don't mind if there's like every once in a while poblano, no, not every once in a while. Here lately, I've gotten a lot of poblanos that have a really nice bite to them, and I don't mind the heat at all. I just don't like the texture. Those seeds, especially when you roast them, get really hard, and I just don't like biting into those, so I try to minimize that by getting rid of them. But again, you could always buy tomatillos in a can and skip this step and just saute up your uh, your peppers, your jalapeno, your poblanos, whatever you wanna use with some onions in a skillet and add it in here and that's perfectly fine too. Uh, like I said, I just like the taste of fresh a little bit better. Now I'm not peeling the tomatillos, it's okay. We're just gonna kind of blitz this up and it's all gonna be good. So first, things, first thing I want to do is go ahead and um, Get this going for just a second. Make sure my steam valve is open. Um, I just want to kind of break these up before we start adding other ingredients, which we're not going to add a whole ton. Again, I'm loosely following this recipe just with what I have on hand. Okay, I got most of the big chunks out. There's a few chunks. I'm not really worried about it. I don't mind the chunkiness. So to this, we just want to add a few flavors in here. Um, I like the taste of peppers, the poblano peppers, especially like my husband and I could just eat those raw practically. We just love the flavor. Um, and I love the flavor of tomatillo, so I don't really want to add a ton of stuff to mask that. So I'm going to just add a few things versus a whole long list. So first off, let's start with a little bit of lime juice. Um, that citrusy pop is really nice with these tomatillos. Like really, really nice. I probably did about a tablespoon or so there. I'm gonna add in some garlic. I happen to find some roasted garlic in my freezer, so that is what I'm using today. Um, I am going to start getting the stuff soon so I can just show you guys how I make the confit garlic because it's amazing and it's so simple and I am just dying to share it with y'all. I just use garlic way slower than I anticipated that I would. <laughs> I know I keep saying that, but I promise it's coming. All right, next I'm gonna add a little bit of honey. This is really nice because it just kind of cuts through some of the strong flavors we have in here. So I did about two tablespoons. We wanna add a little bit of salt. You could always add cumin in here. I'm not the biggest fan of cumin, so I am just going to skip that. You can also add cilantro, which I don't have. I thought I had some and I don't, so we're just gonna skip that as well. I love cilantro. Um, I think it would be beautiful in here and really brighten it up. And then we're gonna add in some sour cream. A lot of these recipes called for uh, cream cheese, which just really was off-putting to me because as you guys know, it's not that I dislike cream cheese. I just feel like it's such a strong flavor. And I just didn't want that taking over this enchilada dish because I felt like neither myself nor my husband would enjoy that. I'm gonna add a little bit of pepper. And then just to tie our flavors together, I'm gonna add a little bit of the same seasoning that I tossed into our chicken, this Chili Verde uh, by Kinder's. Just a little bit, not a ton. I just want all the flavors to kind of marry really well. There we go. I'm gonna pop my lid on. I'm gonna blend this up so it's nice and smooth for the most part. Nice, so now we have this nice creamy uh, enchilada sauce, which I'm super, super excited about. Let me just kind of, there we go. So this is a little different than what I normally make as a green enchilada sauce. I have made that before on my channel where I roasted the tomatillos and the peppers and the onions and all of that. This is slightly different. There's no chicken broth in here. Um, there is sour cream. So I'm super stoked to give this a shot. Green enchilada sauce is definitely a favorite here in my house. So I'm gonna get some of this stuff cleared out of the way. Get some counter space to work on. I love that it suction cups to the counter, but you really gotta be like super strong to get it off sometimes. I'm gonna get this all cleaned up and we'll start assembling the enchiladas. Got things kind of situated. So I'm just making a small batch because my husband and I are the only two that are gonna eat these. I want two nights worth of enchiladas. Um, I'm not really planning much in the way of sides. So I know that's gonna be two to three enchiladas per person. I might throw together a salad. I have stuff for salad. So I want to do, um, I'm gonna say probably like eight enchiladas if I can fit them in here. So I like to start off by putting some of the sauce in the bottom. I do like to have a surface to work on. So 
I'm gonna take a tortilla. You can blot the oil off if you want to, and that's fine. I'm a little bit on the lazy side, so I don't typically do that. But I'm gonna take some of our filling. Um, less is more here. Less is definitely more. Like you want filling and you want them to have filling, but you wanna be able to roll them nice and tightly so that they'll kind of like hold together. I like to put a little bit of cheese in mine because I feel like it holds the ingredients in instead of them kind of like falling out everywhere. And then I roll mine over and I kind of pull it back and tuck it and roll again so I get a real nice tight roll. And then I always place them seam side down. I typically have some that falls off the sides. No worries, just throw that in your next one. And I'm just gonna keep doing this until I have made at least eight. Okay, those are all rolled. I got my eight, which is perfect. So I always like to sauce mine and I sauce them really, really well because these edges here will get like super hard and like a, a gross hard texture if you don't have sauce on them and you're baking them, even if you cover it with foil. So I'm really, really cautious to always, always cover those edges just so that my end product is good. And I am, I'd say fairly generous with the sauce. I'm not drowning the whole pot, but I mean, there's sauce. You can see there's some texture to my sauce. There's some little chunky bits, which I love. I absolutely love. If you guys have been around, you know I love texture in my food. And it looks like I'm gonna have some sauce left over, which is perfect. Um, we're gonna test its freezeability because I tasted this and I love it. Um, it's different than my homemade green enchilada sauce. So if this freezes well, it's gonna be perfect. I can use this again and make, maybe next time I'll do some other burritos. You know, where you do the flour tortillas instead of the corn, they're way quicker. So well, it's also an option if you're out of corn tortillas, just do some other burritos with flour, make it the same. You don't have to worry about frying them or anything. They're good to go. Um, but I'm curious how this would taste. Okay, so I used about half the sauce. So. If you're making a full batch, you should have plenty of sauce. I'm making a smaller batch and that's simply just because like I've mentioned before, um, my oldest won't eat cheese, so he doesn't eat enchiladas. And then my younger two, one of my kids can't have dairy and they don't like things with um, pepper or anything like that in them, peppers. So they will have uh, probably like some soft tacos or something. All right, so we'll just put this cheese on top I'm just using um, some shredded cheese blends. Now, of course, shredding your own cheese is way, way better, um, but I'm kind of in a time crunch. We actually have some homeschool group stuff going on today. So I'm making this, it's now like 9.30. <laughs> I'm making this and I'm gonna pop this in the fridge and then when we get home this afternoon, I'll pull it out, set it on the counter, let it come to room temperature, and then I'll pop these in the oven. I'm gonna cover them with foil and I'll bake them for probably, because they've been in the fridge probably about 30 minutes. Uh, the last five or so minutes, I will probably pull that foil off and let them like do their thing and kind of get a little browning on them. I think that's pretty good right there. All right, like I said, my husband and I will eat this. Everyone else is eating some uh, chicken soft tacos. But this is great for big head. You could freeze this if you wanted to. Um, you can just pop it in your fridge for a couple of days and then bake it on whatever day you want it. Um, and also enchiladas like any casserole reheat beautifully. So if you were to bake this on a Sunday, it's wonderful to reheat Monday for dinner. They hold together so much better on day two and day three. Just a little heads up, but this is going to my fridge for now. Y'all, so super cheesy. It smells incredible. These are out of the oven. I ended up baking them for more like 30, maybe 35 minutes. And I put foil on them and it kind of like pulled some of the cheese off right there when I pulled it off because it had kind of fallen in. So if you are covering yours with foil, be kind of careful and make sure it's pulled tight. I accidentally got the wrong kind of foil. It's like these little flimsy foil sheets. That's all I had. So that's what I had to use, but I'm gonna tell you they're awful. <laughs> I'm getting some regular foil on grocery day this week because I just can't work with that flimsy foil sheet stuff. They're small, they're just, oh, you know? But these look and smell incredible. I absolutely cannot wait to dive right in. All right, friends, we had some leftover rice in the fridge and I just served that on the side. We're gonna say I put tomatillos and babalanos and corn in here. So those are gonna be our veggies for the day. Um, it has been a long, busy day and I just really didn't have a lot of time to think about it. 
um, as the afternoon went on. And right now we're just trying to eat before Awana starts. So here is dinner. I'm actually super excited about it. And I love using up leftovers anyway, because I don't want to waste food. So this is perfect. These smell incredible. I snuck a little bite and I have to say, wow, so, so good. So glad I made this. And I hope you do too, because I think you guys will absolutely love it. There is just so much flavor going on here. Hey, hey friends, it is time for the last meal of the week. Um, I said chicken spaghetti, but I'm kind of just like changing it up just a little. We're gonna do like a, a Tex-Mex chicken spaghetti. And I use the term spaghetti loosely because I'm not entirely certain to have spaghetti noodles. It might be a Tex-Mex chicken and shells, I don't know. But we're gonna kick this off by getting some stuff sauteing. Now, I'm gonna saute some vegetables and then I'm gonna kind of make my own like cream of mushroom soup situation, but you could always use cream of mushroom or cream of chicken or whatever you have on hand. I am also throwing in with this onion one entire poblano pepper that I'm going to saute, but you could just throw in a can of green chilies if you want to save some time. I have this, I need to use it um, because I actually don't have any plans for it. So I'm gonna throw it in here. I've got a little bit of olive oil in the pan with the onion and the pepper, and I'm gonna throw in a little bit of salt. I feel like it always just helps it cook faster. There we go. And I'm gonna add a little bit of pepper, uh, just for flavor, really. And then we're just gonna let this saute until it's nice and soft, and then we'll start adding in the rest of our ingredients. And I'll just kind of let you know um, where you could take some shortcuts with some store-bought help uh, and make this like a really super simple weeknight meal. And just a heads up, the way I'm making it more from scratch is actually not gonna take that much longer either. Um, it takes just as long to throw together a homemade Alfredo for the most part, so this is really not gonna take too much longer, but again, you could shorten it up just a little bit. All right, I'm gonna go well, first I'm gonna throw some onions, then I'm gonna go dig through my pantry and see what our pasta choices are, and I'll get back to you. All right, I was getting the rest of my ingredients ready. So these are softened up, the onions even got a little bit of color. I'm gonna add some of my roasted garlic in here. You could add in a little bit of um, garlic powder. You could add in just like one or two cloves of minced garlic. Really just whatever you have on hand, and you can throw together a meal pretty close to what we're gonna have here. A lot of the stuff I'm using is um, pantry staple type ingredients, except for maybe the poblano pepper, but a lot of us have green chilies in our um, our pantry. And if you don't, maybe you have bell pepper, and that would be really good too. All right, I'm gonna add in a can of Rotel. Juice and all. And next, we're gonna add in some heavy cream, just one cup. This is gonna be where your cream of mushroom soup would come in. Um, if that's what you're using, you'll wanna add the cream of mushroom soup with probably a little bit of water just so it's stirrable and not quite so globby. Gonna let this kinda come up to temperature for a minute. We can go ahead and add a few seasonings. Um, cumin would be great in here. Chili powder would be great in here. Garlic and onion powder, a paprika. You can kind of add any of those that you want to, whatever kind of suits your, your taste and your family's palate. I am just gonna add some paprika because I kind of want to keep it um, a little simpler. I do have some garlic, salt, and pepper on the shredded chicken already, just to make sure that that has a little bit of flavor. And I think I'm gonna keep it simple like that, but if you wanna kick it up a notch, chili powder, cumin, paprika, garlic powder, onion powder, any or all of those would be great additions to this. Oh, if you had some chipotle chili powder, that'd probably be really good too if you want a little spice to it. All right, that is starting to warm up. So I've got some Velveeta in my fridge that I cubed up. I've got maybe half a block, it's the uh, queso blanco. So I'm gonna add in, I don't know if I'm gonna add all of it, but I'm gonna start adding some in. And I do know this is gonna get very thick. So I have three quarters of a cup of chicken broth ready to go in here to thin it out and just kind of make it more saucy once this Velveeta melts in here. 
Now you could use cheese whiz if you've got that, or you could just add in some fresh shredded cheese. I happen to have this in my fridge and I really do need to kind of use it up. And typically when I make chicken spaghetti, I add a uh, Velveeta or a uh, cheese whiz, whatever I happen to have on hand. There we go, I didn't quite add all of it. There's a little bit left. And I am not the biggest fan of Velveeta. It is not my favorite, but I do um, I do keep it on hand because there's a couple of applications I use it in. And this happens to be one of them. I almost just reached for my regular cheese, but I do really need to use this Velveeta up. I used uh, half the block for something a couple of weeks ago and I've had it in my fridge. And I mean, it stays good for quite a long time, but I do need to use it. So I'm just gonna let this kind of melt for a few minutes. As you notice, I added some salt in the very beginning to the onions and peppers and I've added no more. I am not going to add any more. Velveeta is super, super salty. When I taste it at the end, if I decide it needs a little more salt, then I will add some. But as it stands right now, I feel like that might be enough. Once this melts, we might even be adding in some of this chicken broth and that is also salty because I made it from better than bouillon and that would just add more salt in here as well. So we wanna wait till the very, very end to, uh, to, to test the salt level. All right, so our noodle of choice is gonna be bow ties today. I went through my pantry, I've got linguine, um, and I've got shells, and I've got wagon wheels, <laughs> and I have some cavatappi, I think it's, it is, but I'm saving that for something else. So we're just gonna go with these bow ties. All right, our cheese is mostly melted at this point. So I do wanna brighten this up a little bit because Velveeta is such a heavy, heavy flavor. So I'm gonna add in just a few dashes of lime juice, just for some brightness. You could do lemon juice or you could skip this, totally up to you. Just a little bit, we don't even really wanna taste a whole bunch of it. We just want that um, citric acidity, the citric acid to kind of cut through this richness. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add in my chicken. I've already, like I said, I seasoned it with some uh, garlic salt and pepper and I did run a knife through it just to make sure it's in you know nice bite sized kind of pieces I don't want it to be super stringy or anything give that a good stir now I'm standing here thinking about it and you know what if you had a can of cheddar cheese soup you could probably just add that in place of a lot of the Velveeta and the cream and mushroom soup and then maybe just top it with some fresh shredded cheese at the end too if that's something you have in your pantry that may be a great option I'm trying to think of other pantry staples you could like um alternate some of these ingredients with and of course instead of using heavy cream you could always use milk with a little bit of cornstarch in it just add in maybe a teaspoon of cornstarch to about a cup and a half of milk and once it tightens up it'll be about the equivalent of the heavy cream that i added in there all right, as I anticipated, this is definitely tightening up a lot. So I do wanna add a little bit of chicken broth in here. And you're just gonna to have to kind of play this by ear. We don't want like queso consistency here, even though essentially that's kind of what we have. Um, we want more of a saucy experience. Although, now that I'm thinking about it, my husband is like a huge fan of queso. This would probably make some really epic uh, chicken queso dip for a party if you're into that kind of stuff or substitute like sausage or ground beef or chorizo for the chicken. It'll be really, really, really good. Okay, my bow ties just finished cooking and I strained them. So now I'm just gonna add some sauce in here and I think I've made too much sauce, which does not in any way surprise me. So uh, my husband's gonna love this queso dip that I'm gonna serve. Uh, over the weekend. It is Mother's Day weekend and my husband is fantastic because every Mother's Day weekend he cooks and um, just lets me kind of chill for the most part which is like awesome because it gives me time to do things I want to do like uh, whatever crafting I'm working on or currently I am playing Hogwarts Legacy so I'm like so excited to spend the weekend playing that. <laughs> But um, queso's gonna go great with the hamburgers and hot dogs that he is going to be grilling. So I think he's gonna love having that as a nice little dip. I think it'll be fantastic. So I'm going to just call that a win in my book. <laughs> 
All right, friends, that wraps up this week of meals made from rotisserie chickens. I hope you enjoyed those because my family sure did love eating them. These were all super delicious and super tasty. They made a ton of food and we had leftovers from every single meal. So that is definitely a winner in my book. I think you guys will love them too. I have linked or listed all the recipes down below so you can try them out at home. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's video and I will see you soon with another one. Bye.